Welcome back. My first guest tonight is an Emmy Award winning actor you know from Big Love, Bojack Horseman, and a little show you might remember called Breaking Bad. Please welcome Aaron Paul. <laughs> Everybody. Nice to see you again. Yeah, great to see you. Thanks for having me. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and all of the above. Yeah, you too. Um, okay. Everybody loved Breaking Bad. It's been six years yeah. since you guys went off the air. God help us. But you are back. Before we get to anything else, I just want to get into this. You're back with Brian Cranston. Yeah. Working on a new project, and mm. it's not one that I expected. Right. You guys, do I, is this the stuff right here? This is it. This is it. You guys are working on a mezcal. <laughs> dos hombres. Yeah. Dos hombres, two guys. These are dos yeah. hombres. And may I remind you that last time we saw the dos hombres, <laughs> yeah. they looked like this. I mean, it's just a natural right. sort of progression. But now, now the dos hombres look like this. Yeah. A little more this, peaceful. Exactly. Is this right here? Yeah. Is this right here? Is this an alternate ending to Breaking Bad where yeah, you he's guys an... go just do booze that's legal? Or are, are you dead and this is heaven? Yeah, because... I mean, well, Walt died, and so we, we do look like we're in heaven. You do? It feels like we're in heaven. Mm -hmm. um, you look like yeah. extras in a progressive commercial. <laughs> um, okay, no. so why? Why? <laughs> Why, 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 why the booze? I mean, why not? You know, <laughs> uh, right? That's a, good, that's a good question. Why yeah. not? Why not? Are we gonna? Yes, sure yes. Go. Let's, let's do it. Do it. Um, sure no, Brian and I were actually having. Uh... Let me. Let me. Do you, take, do you take a lime? Do no. you take a lime? No. No. no, no, no. Take a lime? Just a little ice. Are you okay if I do a lime? Yeah. Or... Get, get in there. Yeah, there Should I go, fill go, it go. all the way to the top? No. Or no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I have to work after this. Um, okay. Brian and I were having dinner in New York, and he mm. said, look, is it too soon to do another project together? And I said, I think people are just going to see us as Walt and Jesse for a little while. And I go, what do you think about going into the booze business? And he laughed. And I go, no, I'm being serious. What do you think about mezcal? And uh, he laughed again. He's like, the thing with the worm at the bottom of it? I'm like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't have to have the worm. No, see, it doesn't have to have the worm. And so that was when the seed was planted, and that was uh -huh. a little over three years ago, and, and here we are. If you have enough of it, you're the worm at the bottom. <laughs> there you go. There Cheers. you go. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Oh, that's lovely. That's it's lovely. smooth. I always just drink it neat nice. or on the rocks. Yeah. How does one start a, a, a booze? What do you have oh, to do? Wow. What, 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 where, First where? of all, it's so much more work than you would think. Dude. Lots of drinking involved. Okay. Uh, uh, but wheat. where do you source the material? It's like Oaxaca that? is where mezcal really comes from, and we traveled all over Oaxaca trying to find the perfect mezcal. It's like going to Napa and finding the perfect wine. You travel all over Oaxaca, find the perfect mezcal, and we 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 agreed. We're like, look, if we don't find the perfect juice, we're just we're not going to do it. There's no reason to do it. Mm -hmm. And we found this small little village three hours outside of the center of Oaxaca City, and we had to take off our boots, um, hike up our our pants, and hike through a river, and then 15 minute hike into the just the wilderness, and we came across, honestly, what looked like a meth lab in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and I already just sensed, oh, this is it. This has got to be the spot. Did Brian agree? No, or... well, well, we were like, what is this place, you know? And then we, we tasted it. We looked at each other, and then we did, had another sample. And we're like, I think, I think, this, is, I think this is it. Is that fun to, to be yes. talking to the guy? It sounds almost dangerous to be doing that. Maybe it was. You could get I don't bitten know. By a snake or something right, right, like that. Right. There yeah. was no snakes, just lots of booze. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there you go. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, cheers. It really is so smooth and, and special. So I heard a story that oh, tell me if this is true that you guys are obviously great on screen together in Breaking Bad. I heard a story that your character. 
um, uh, when you got the gig, your character, unbeknownst to you, right. was going to be knocked off in the first season. What, and not, it was going to be towards the end of the first season, like mm -hmm. the, the, the fifth or sixth episode, he was supposed to die from like a rival gang. And then at the end of the first season, Walt takes revenge. Um, I did not know that. <laughs> Thank God they changed their mind. Mm -hmm. But um, they You just, never got a whiff of it? No, I, I mean, Brian would always toy around with me that I was going to die, you know? And you always Did he know you were supposed to die? He, I think he did know I was supposed to die, but they just kept it a secret from me. Um, thank God. But at the, towards the end of the first season, Vince told me that was the plan, and I just never, I couldn't, couldn't shake it until we were done shooting the show. I always thought I was going to... I was gonna die, but they just loved what. <laughs> were there any scripts you were reading? Like you'd go to the next page, like I'm definitely dead on the next page. <laughs> I mean, many, many scripts. But uh, Brian would come up to me, and he one time he, he came up to me and gave me this long hug, <laughs> inappropriately long. Um, and he's like, "Hey, it was a fun ride, man." I go, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Well, the 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 newest episode is just you know at least you go out swinging, you know." I go, what are you talking about? He's like, oh, you haven't read it. I go, no. He's like, call me anytime. Like, I'm here to talk. <laughs> and then uh, I ran into the production office. I'm like, what is happening? Let me read the, Brian read the script. Let me see it. Uh, they wouldn't show me anything. He was just lying. <laughs> he was just lying to me. That's what actors do. Yeah. They lie for a living. Yeah. Um, can you explain this um, before I call children services here? Yeah. This is you and your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> oh. There so that's go. that story. Um, she's just the sweetest. So that was at Comic Con. Uh, the first time I was at Comic Con was towards the end of Breaking Bad, and I had walked out with uh, like a fake baby, like a baby Holly, and that same sort of meth suit. And after Comic Con, I asked, can I, I'm like, can I keep this for my unborn baby? They're like, oh, you're having a baby. I'm like, well, eventually I'll have a baby. <laughs> Anyways, randomly. The next time I was at Comic-Con, she fit in that costume, and I brought it with me. Oh. And I was actually backstage. I'm like, do I do this? Is this weird? Like, my baby's not asking for this. Anyways, Brian actually helped put that suit on my baby. <laughs> He's like, no, just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. She'll thank you later. Now, uh, you're also in the upcoming season of Westworld. Yes. Ed Harris was on the show yep. last week. And Ed... Ed said, Ed said he doesn't understand the show. Right. Do you understand the show? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had to rewatch the, the second season again. I'm such a crazy fan of that show. I, so am, when I they, am too. When they asked me to be a part of it, I was just so excited to kind of get a peek behind, you know, their velvet curtain in a way. Would you be willing to be nude in it? Because Ed Harris said he, he, he in his contract, is that he can't be nude. He won't do one of the nude scenes. He, he hasn't, did. he wasn't nude? No. He says he won't, he refuses to be nude because a lot right. of people end up, who haven't seen it, a lot of people, the robots, a lot of them are robots. Yeah. You don't know who is a robot from like episode to episode and they end up being nude. Yeah, I thought just... everyone just ends up being nude on the show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No. I mean, I may or may not be nude in this season. I don't know. We'll see. If you have to be nude, would you work out to look better nude? Or you'd be like, no, I'm an actor. I want to be honest that this is what I actually look like. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I realize that question is implying that you look terrible nude. I mean, I am, mean I gonna, I am, mean I gonna, am I going to do push-ups in between takes? Probably not. But uh, if I know I'm going to be naked, I'll, I'll, I'll try and exercise. And maybe not eat a bunch of pasta before. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. <laughs> you know. The new show. Uh, you got a new show on Apple TV. Yeah. Apple TV. It's called Truth Be Told. And it's about a, a journalist um, played by Octavia Spencer. Mm -hmm who is a, making a true crime podcast. Yeah. Do you listen to true crime podcasts? People are obsessed with murder these days. <laughs> yeah, it's very odd. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I was introduced to the podcast world uh, with Serial. That was, sure. That was the first, first podcast yeah. that I, I dove into, and I was just so hooked. I couldn't, I couldn't stop listening. And Sarah Koenig actually was a big, uh, big part of Truth Be Told. She sort of sure. oversaw the whole podcast element of this show. And 
um, which was very exciting for me. But uh, she was the one who was a part of uh, Serial. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love it. What, we, have a, we have a clipper. What, what's happening? It's between you and uh, Octavia Spencer. Yeah, uh, she plays Poppy, this, uh, this journalist who actually had a lot to do with putting my character in prison. I was accused, my character Warren K was accused of murdering his next door neighbor when he was 16 years old uh, on Halloween night, stabbing him to death. Um, and he is serving a life sentence and he's been there for about 19 years. Um, but he's always uh, declared his innocence. And so this is them sort of coming into contact for the first time. Jim? I live in a house full of men who breathe to lie. And I could smell yours before you even started talking. You're full of well, I'm here now. I can make up for it. Can you? <sighs> and now you are here for my blood. Vampire. <laughs> you <laughs> predator. Not a nice guy. You don't seem nice. Aaron, thanks so much for it's being here. It's great to see you, my friend. Thank Truth you. Be Told is available on Apple TV+, Plus, and Dos Hombres is available in the Mexican jungle near you. Aaron Paul, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by Adina Menzel.